Hodi Krishna Hodi Krishna 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 Hodi 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 Ramu Hodi Ramu 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 Hodi 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 Krishna Hodi Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Ram, Hare Ram. Ram Ram Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram. Hari Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Hari Ram Hari Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram. Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ramo, Hare Ramo, Ram Ram, 
हादे हादे कृष्णा कृष्णा हादे हादे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हादे हादे जय प्रभु पदा प्रभु पदा प्रभु पदा जय प्रभु पदा जय प्रभु पदा जय प्रभु पदा प्रभु पदा जय प्रभु पदा गौरा हरिबा 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 गौरा हरिबा निता गौरा हरिबा हरिव हरिव गौरा हरिव निता गौरा हरिव 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 गौरा हरिव सो फॉर दिस class which i think is special for you at least it's special for me 6 o'clock i want to speak uh, about a very meaningful song from shila bhakti vinod thakur it is called keno hari krishna naam which means o oh why while chanting hari krishna hmm so keno hari krishna naam hari bole mano pran kande na o oh why does my heart not weep from chanting the holy names of krishna and then he begins that, that is the refrain and then the first verse begins pakina jani kon aparadhe mukhe hari krishna naam bolo na so the word paki means bird bird of my heart Now I think you all know the classic example of this body being like a tree with two birds seated in the tree on a branch. This example is found in Shrimad Bhagavatam and uh, in other Vedic literatures, Upanishads especially. So one bird is the atma the soul and the other bird is the paramatma who is shakshi witness and 
He is giving matak smriti jnanam apohanam cha. Knowledge, remembrance, and forgetfulness. And that is being supplied according to the desire of the uh, jivatma bird. So, in material life, the little jiva in the heart is busy tasting the fruits within this tree of the body. Everyone by their karma. With this body, you get a certain amount of enjoyable pal, enjoyable fruit. This is parabda karma, karma which from the past which is now manifest. So there is suk, there will be happiness and there will be duk, distress. So the uh, living entity bird is busy tasting these fruits, sweet and bitter. The Lord, the other bird, Paramatma bird, uh, he is not engaged in tasting these fruits because he is Atmaram, self-satisfied. So the Paramatma is there in the same tree of the body by his mercy. He's waiting for us to become fed up, as we say, <laughs> fed up with this tasting business. And then uh, that living entity bird will turn his attention to the witness bird, Paramatma, and then he'll know what is real happiness. So, another thing that birds do besides hopping around in tree and tasting fruits, is that they, they sing. And some birds, like the parrot, uh, can even learn to speak. So, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is saying, Paki na jani kon aparade muke hori krishna nam bole na. That this bird of my heart, in other words, my soul, does not know what past sinful activities it has committed to cause this inability to chant Hare Krishna properly. Hmm? Then, Banir Pakire Dhare Raklam Hridoy Mandire Madhu Makha E Harinam Pakire Shikhaile Shikhe that, O oh forest bird, I have kept something for you uh, within the cottage of, within my heart, and that is the holy name of Lord Hari. And this is overflowing with pure, sweet honey. O oh bird, you could learn the chanting of this name if you were taught. So you see this uh, very nice poetry here. That this bird is interested in tasting something sweet. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, I have the sweetest thing of all, and that is the holy name of Krishna. Ah. 
So you should learn to sing and chant this holy name. But then in the next verse, Pakisakal nam borte paro, keno Hari Krishna nam bolo na, keno Hari Krishna nam Hari bole mano pran kande na. That a bird is easily able to speak all names. Why then does this bird of my heart refuse to chant Hare Krishna? Now, we should note <coughs> that one may be uh, speaking or singing the syllables Hare Krishna But that does not mean that the holy name is manifest in those syllables. The holy name is Krishna himself. And so just like any uh, form of Krishna made from wood or stone, that is not necessarily Krishna himself. Krishna appears for his devotees, not just for anyone and everyone. Hmm? So the Lord appears when his devotees have great anxiety to serve him and love him. That's what makes these forms deities. Not that some uh, Murtiwala has carved the form of Krishna into marble. And therefore Krishna is forced to be there because it's his form. He's captured in the stone. Krishna is Swarat, he's independent. Mm -hmm. So he will not be there if, for example, some, someone wants to open a nightclub, call it the nightclub Krishna, and keep a statue of Krishna at the entrance. Or you can see in India, uh, Krishna wine shop. It's not that Krishna is forced to be there in his form or in his name. So this is the sense in which Bhaktivinoda Thakur is saying, Paki sakal nam bolte paro, keno Hare Krishna nam bole na. That a bird is easily able to speak all names, then why does this bird of my heart refuse to chant Hare Krishna? Why is not the, uh, Krishna himself appearing within the syllables uttered by this bird? Then, Keno Hari Krishna Nam Hari Bole Man Pran Konde Na. Why does my heart not weep from chanting the holy names Hari Krishna? You see, that is real chanting. Uh, the chanting of the holy name when it is really there, when Krishna and the name are not different, that is bhava stage and bhava means transcendental ec uh, ecstasy and there the spiritual emotions erupt from the heart. So we need to understand this very clearly. 
that before we come to this Baba stage, we are not really chanting Krishna's name. Hopefully we are chanting at least the Namabhas, which is the reflection of the Holy Name. But there is also Nama Parad too, which is offensive chanting. So these are not Nama, uh, certainly Nama Parad, but even Nama Bas is not the actual name of Krishna. So this is Bhaktivinoda Thakur's anxiety. Mm, that if I was really chanting, then tears would erupt from my eyes. But that's not happening. So this means my soul, the bird of my heart, does not know how to chant Hare Krishna. And he says, huh, this must be due to aparad. There are offenses remaining. Then here, in, in the fourth verse, Chalo pake rupe deshi jai, je desheti manir manush asa jauya nai. O bird, come, let us go to the spiritual world, the land of true and everlasting beauty. And then something very interesting. It is the place where the imaginary man of my mind will never again come and go on the revolving cycle of birth and death. Come and go on the revolving cycle of birth and death. This is very, very interesting point. Uh, maner Manush, the imaginary man, the man of the mind. So the thing is, is that we all have an image of ourself, which is not true. That is called the material identity. Hmm? So the material identity originates in the mind and is projected onto this body which is just a lump of flesh and blood and bone moved by the modes of material nature. Hmm? But this imaginary personality identifies with this dead body. And this maner manush, imaginary personality, this is, you see, Lord Chaitanya says, cheto darpana marjanam. You have to clean the mirror of the mind. So when the mind is dirty, this is what is there, an imaginary self. Mm. And so this Manir Manush, imagined self, is giving us so much trouble. Earlier this afternoon I was speaking, there was some question coming about relationships. So you live in a community here, New Brajadam, many devotees. and you have your relationships. Uh, but you see what happens in relationship is that you have two people uh, with their uh, karma which is the result of this imagination, imaginary identifying with the body. Mm. 
So, you know, each person has their maner manush, their imaginary self. And these two come together, two imaginations. And they create another imagination. The, the apparent relationship. See? So therefore, you see, about one person, different persons around him have different conception, different idea of who this person is. You see, so those who are friendly, they say, oh, he's very nice. And those who are unfriendly, they say, he's no good. But this, this is duality. This is a creation of the mind. Hmm? Dvanva mohena. Krishna calls it the illusion. Moha. Of dvanva, duality. Liking and disliking. So in this way, there is, you know, in a, this is a relationship between two maner manush, <laughs> imagined people, there is created a third imagination. Mm -hmm. And this third person in between, who is that? That is Maya. <laughs> exactly. You see, Mana, uh, Maya appears uh, uh, in our relationship with sense objects. So as long as we're not seeing the soul, hmm, Maya will be there. Huh? As long as we're not seeing the soul, then we're seeing a sense object. So we think this person is nice because gratifies my senses. Oh, he's very funny. He tells, he tells jokes, makes me laugh. I like him. He's a good guy. Of course, then he, he's, the jokes he's telling, they're about someone else. So that someone else <laughs> who's being joked about, he thinks he's a bad guy. Always oh, talking about me. I don't like him. But the actual fact is, he is spirit soul, I am spirit soul. Huh? So how can we see the spirit soul? There must be Krishna consciousness. This is why we uh, say, you hear again and again, uh, read it in Srila Prabhupada's books that in all relationships Krishna must be the center, not Maya. When Krishna is at the center, then two spirit souls, pure spirit souls can relate. You see? So this is a, this is a very, very deep point that Srila Bhakti no Thakur is making here about the maner manush. And this is the self which is rotating uh, through various births, 8,400,000 species. Uh, it's the subtle body, linga, sharira, which is doing the enjoying and suffering of these different bodily forms. The soul is not touched by this. Mm, so, then of course comes the question, well, but I'm soul and I'm experiencing happiness and distress, so how am I not touched? And the answer to that question is uh, 
you get it by understanding the oneness and difference between the soul, the self and consciousness. Consciousness and the soul are in one sense not different. But consciousness is the energy of the soul. Hmm? And by this energy we can be elevated or degraded. So there's the difference. You see? The consciousness can uh, become attached to matter. Mm -hmm. And then we are degraded. But actually the soul is never touched by matter. The soul is always part and parcel of Krishna. You see, but we think that we're in the material world. This is the maner manush. Uh, this is the imaginary self, which is a concoction of consciousness under the modes of material nature. So Bhakti Thakur then he's, he begins to preach very strongly to the bird of his heart. Pakire tor marna kalete choribi baser dolate orecha genete konde kore loe jabe smashan gatete which means O bird time of death your body will simply be placed upon a funeral stretcher you know and four persons will lift that body onto their shoulders, the stretcher, and carry it to the smashan ghat, which means the burning ghat, the cremation ground. Ghat means it, it's a place by the river. Ganga or Jamuna, some holy river. So after the body is burned, they shovel the ashes into the river. So Bhakti Notaku is saying, this is the destination of this body that you are so attached to. Ore or muke agjive tule ki kori bitai bolo na. Ocean fire will then enter your mouth and burn up your tongue. This is very <laughs> wonderful poetic description. <laughs> See, in the uh, traditional uh, Vedic or now we say Hindu uh, cremation then the son of the father he lights the fire on the father's body and he first lights the fire in the father's mouth that's where the fire first is lit See, you'll find in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is mentioned there that the tongue, jiva, that is also the place of Agni, the demigod Agni, resides there too. So therefore the fire is ignited there to consume the whole body. And so, Bhaktivinoda says, there will be nothing you can do to save yourself, for at that time it is too late, you will be, un be unable to speak. <laughs> when the tongue is burning, it's too late to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> so he's begging the bird of his mind, please, you start chanting now. 
And again, that means uh, to cry, you see, to have such feelings of separation from Krishna that when I chant, then tears of ecstasy come to the eyes. Now we can't do this by imitation, obviously. You see, the sahajyas, they know how to work up their emotions so they can put on a show. Actually, they do it by thinking of other things, not about Krishna. Like there's a story <clears throat> of uh, uh, one sadhu was speaking about Radha Bhava, hmm? the ecstasy of Srimati Radharani. And he was describing Radha's, Radharani's beautiful eyes. And how these eyes are always longing to see Krishna. So in the audience there was one woman sitting. And he, as, he, as the sadhu was talking about Radha's eyes, the woman began to cry. And the sadhu said to everyone, just see, she has this bhav. <laughs> but actually the lady, she was remembering that when she was a little girl, she had a goat, a little goat, whose, female goat, whose name was Radha. And the goat, her pet, had very nice eyes. <laughs> so she was thinking of that and she began to cry. So for the sahajas, this is enough. They'll even keep chili powder, you know, in their dhoti. So in the kirtan, when no one's looking, they can put some in their eye and the tears will come. No, you, you cannot chant Hare Krishna purely by such artificial methods. But we should desire. This is the point of the song. Hmm? Bhaktivinoda Thakur is lamenting that the bird of my heart does not chant properly. Hmm? And he's iring just uh, in another song. Kobe hobi bolo se dinamar. When or oh when will that day be mine? When I will chant the holy name properly. Mm. So Prabhupada said, in this way, you don't have the desire uh, for Krishna so that you chant Hare Krishna properly. So you should desire that desire. And if you don't have the desire to desire Krishna while chanting, then you should desire that desire for that desire. <laughs> and if you don't have that desire, then you should desire that desire for that desire for that desire when you chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> and this way it goes. But we should want this thing. Then that will keep us on the path of progress. You see, on the other side, because we are not chanting Hare Krishna properly, so we may become depressed. And this has happened to many devotees in this, 
this ISKCON movement. They become depressed and then they give it up. They think, what's the use? I'm chanting, but the mind is crowded with materialistic thoughts. I have so many desires. I'm not getting anywhere by this chanting. So I should be honest, that's what they say. <laughs> Honestly in Maya. <laughs> but to be in Maya is not honest. <laughs> and again, this is the point. This agitated person who can't chant Hare Krishna properly is the Manir Manush, is the imagination of our mind. We are pure spirit soul. Hmm? But we are covered. That's the problem. We're covered. So the chanting is cutting through that covering. I explained that this morning. It is like digging for treasure. And this is this is exactly the analogy that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has used. You may remember that Lord Chaitanya has given an example of a poor man who is told that uh, you have been left a treasure. You didn't know about this, but it is buried just outside of your residence. Uh, so this poor man is told, given this information by a great astrologer named Sarvagya, which means all-knowing. And Sarvagya tell him, tells him to dig on the east side of his house. The east side is the direction of bhakti. So the other sides uh, there is um, uh, karma to the south, um, jnana to the west, and yoga to the north. Don't dig in those directions. You see, if you dig to the south, then you'll just uncover a wasp's nest, and all the wasps will come out and sting you. This is the result of karma. We just get tormented by material reactions. If you dig to the west, then a ghost will come up out of the ground and haunt you. You'll be haunted. In other words, this is jnana, so this is mental speculation. If you dig to the north, you'll be swallowed by a big snake. This is oneness, becoming one, merging. So dig to the east, there you'll find the treasure. Hmm? So we shouldn't give up. How foolish that is. If he's been told treasure is there, well, maybe it's buried very deep. So you have to work to get it. So dig down one meter, Puh, all I'm getting is dirt. <laughs> now this is very important to understand. You see, on, upon our heart there's so much dirt that has been lying uh, since many, many births. In this lifetime, we're only dealing with the surface dirt, parabda karma. But you see, there are deeper levels of desire. 
Hmm? These are described by Rupa Goswami, a nectar of devotion. Uh, there is uh, kutta, that means the propensity for sinfulness. And there's bija, the seeds of sinful desire. So these are all deep, deep down. Uh, and they're just, you know, there. We don't even notice them in our mundane consciousness. We're just too busy dealing with this parabdha karma, what's happening in this life. So when you begin to chant Hare Krishna, and you're digging down in the heart towards the soul, and all this dirt that was just lying still, Suddenly, all the dust is coming up. You're getting all dirty from this work. And you're thinking, oh, so much dirt in my heart. I never realized. So then, like I said, someone may become depressed and say, just dirt. And look at me, I'm all dirty now. Oh, what's the use of this? Let me stop and be honest. <laughs> this is really foolishness. <laughs> You've been told there's a treasure down there. <laughs> so why you would stop to be honest? <laughs> What kind of honesty is that? <laughs> no, we should keep digging. Then finally come to the treasure. Hmm? That treasure is love of Godhead. So it's not a cheap thing. Therefore we have to keep cultivating the chanting of Hare Krishna through good times and bad times. See, when you take initiation, then you're married to the holy name. And marriage, you know, any marriage means sometimes there's good, sometimes there's bad. <laughs> but the vow is, I stick to this. So those who are too much on the mental platform, they can't stick. The mind is chanchala, restless. And they're so unfortunate. They think I'm free myself, you know, when they renounce something they don't like. Oh, I freed myself from... But what has happened? You've become more bound by the mind. You see? The more we listen to the mind, then the more, just like I told you, ghostly haunted we become. And that's, you know, it's a fact. This listening to the mind, you know, step after step after step, surrendering, surrendering to the mind, it finally leads to suicide. This is what your mind really wants you to do. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's a fact. The mind is always saying, oh, you can't do this. It's too much. It's too much. You see. You see. Get away from it. Go somewhere else. Flee. And, and you listen. You say, oh, yes, yes, I have to go. And then the next time, the mind, oh, this is also too much. Flee, flee. And you go. And so you keep surrendering. Finally, the mind says, life in this body is too much. This life is too much. Kill yourself. <laughs> you just be a mind. 
You see, just be a ghost, mind without a body. That's what I want. <laughs> That's what the mind wants. <laughs> so don't listen to this mad thing in your head. <laughs> and that's why we have what's called samskara in Vedic culture. It impresses the mind with serious dedication. So this is initiation. We get initiated into the chanting, we have to take it seriously. Don't give it up. So, time for RT, I think. Is it? Seven o'clock? Yes, okay. So I thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Sri Harinam, Ki Jai. Gaur Premanandi, Hari Hari Bol.